welcome back to Sharp Pointy Things. Today we're going to look at some shooty boomy things. I brought these in specifically because they are Damascus barrels. Uh, do a lot of work with Damascus knives. And there's a, a common misunderstanding. It's not entirely inaccurate, but it's a misinterpretation of Damascus shotguns. The conventional wisdom is that if you ever put modern shells into a Damascus barrel, you will rip a hole in the space-time continuum as we know it and exterminate all life on Earth. <clears throat> uh, in reality, a lot of Damascus shotguns are perfectly fine with modern ammunition. Uh, the uh, Birmingham Proofing House did a test using provisionally proofed barrels. They'd been manufactured, tested, they had not been finished, and started loading them up with propellant and shot, starting at proof pressure and incrementing 10% at a time until they got deformation outside of spec. They didn't have any barrels fail, they, they simply kept going until they got uh, deformation. The steel barrels, and these were 100, 130 year old barrels. These are barrels from the 1870s, 1880s. The steel barrels went to 500% of proof. So 650% of maximum using pressure. And that's using sequential overpressure loads. The Damascus barrels only went to 400%. Uh, so it's like 23 sequentially overpressure loads. Uh, uh, we're going to do a close-up here and look at the proof marks on these. These are actually ha have been proofed for modern shells. So first of all, we're going to take a look at the beautiful workmanship on all three of these. Uh, there's various... Uh, this is the Jones under lever. Um, this is a side swing. And then this one has what's actually a shoots and rifle grip, but the grip is the barrel release. Um, but they're all Damascus, they're all modern proofed. Uh, it's really not that big a deal or that uncommon. And they're all beautifully made guns, about 140 years old. This is a, a double barreled shotgun from the venerable firm of Williamson and Sons, who, despite the similarity of names, is not related to me. Um, the proof marks put this sometime before 1875. It is a cartridge shotgun, so it's after 1858 when Charles Lancaster invented the modern shotgun cartridge. One of the key points is it has non-rebounding hammer. If you want to open it, you have to have the hammers at half cock so the firing pins are free. This went away when the rebounding hammer was invented in 1867. Very quickly everyone went to rebounding hammers because they're much safer. What happens there is the hammer strikes the pin, bounces back just enough to give some clearance, which also works as a safety. Uh, the only safety here is to have it on half cock and it has Jones under lever. So we don't have company records, but this gun was made sometime per its proof marks and features in the 1860s. The barrels are Damascus steel. So I'm gonna go ahead and dismount this. It also has a barrel wedge rather than a latch, which also makes it an early gun. And the Jones under lever. So looking at this one, um, the 13 is the bore gauge. It's a 12 gauge chamber, two and a half inch. Nitro proof is marked all over it. This came from the Birmingham through the Birmingham proofing house uh, So sometime after 1926 this was proof for modern shells and it will shoot them just fine Damascus barrel is a generic because this is looks like a stub twist barrel. There's dozens of different twist patterns The British preferred two and three bar the Belgians used four and six bar which was prettier, but not necessarily as strong the important thing here is that these are two and a half inch chambers. This is a chamber gauge. They're two and a half inches. These are the shells it shoots. Now a chamber is measured open, so when fired, it, it will be like that inside the chamber. This is a modern two and three quarter inch shell. It will fit into the chamber. That's not an issue. The problem is when you fire it, the petals are opening inside the forcing cone and you're slamming the entire shot column up behind it with maximum pressure. When these guns burst, they tend to burst right about here because that's you've shoved all the pressure into the weakest spot. So it, it has nothing to do with the fact that you're shooting modern shells. It has to do with the fact that you're shooting a shell that is too long. Uh, there's a myth that, oh, well, you can use low brass and you'll be okay. Uh, low brass, high brass these days, first of all, they're mostly made of steel or aluminum and then washed in, in brass. 
Second of all, there's no significant difference in the loading. E either can be either. And third of all, the shell is too long. If you put too long a shell into the gun, it is going to have catastrophic problems. So looking at these proof marks, the they say Nitro Proof NP, and right here, this is dated 2007. This went through the London Proofing House in 2007 for modern 16 gauge, two and a half inch shells, and it is perfectly safe to shoot with those. Now another interesting feature on this, you'll see where it says not English make. This is a Belgian gun that was imported and therefore proofed in the, the UK. Um, another one of the myths is that Belgian guns are garbage. Now there are some very low quality Belgian guns, but there are also some exceptional quality Belgian guns. Um, this one's uh, quite nice. And then after uh, 1926, it was proofed for modern shells. So, certainly well made and a very durable gun. You notice this hammer has been repaired. There's welding on that. Eventually, at some point, I will pay an expert to clean that up. On this, the lever is horn, and you notice all the screws are properly clocked and aligned. That's a common feature for high-end guns. And then the pistol grip is also carved out of horn, and again, the screws are properly clocked. So, that, that's the proof marks we're looking at. These guns have all been certified to be perfectly fine with modern ammunition. Most of the ones that aren't proofed will also be perfectly fine. Now, here's the critical point. When we looked at the proof marks, these are all two and a half inch chambers. You cannot put a two and three quarter inch shell in here. There, there's a another conventional wisdom that as long as you use low brass, you'll be fine. So most shotgun shells these days have steel case with a brass wash at the base. Uh, there's no loading difference between low or high brass anymore. It's purely cosmetic. And the issue you're facing is that the shell is too long for the chamber. What if it's a really soft load? It doesn't matter. You cannot put a two and three quarter inch shell into a two and a half inch chamber. Okay. Correctly, you can put one in there because a shell is measured open. So a two and 
three quarter inch shell is two and a half closed and will fit in the chamber. But you are then opening the petals inside the forcing cone and slamming the shot column behind them. And when you see a gun that's split, a lot of them split right here where that would be. So if you have one of these antiques, obviously you should get it examined by a professional, make sure the bore is sound because erosion does happen, especially with old black powder loads. Uh, make sure they are cleaned and maintained. And then you have to buy the correct ammunition. Uh, there's companies out there, uh, I endorse RST shells. You tell them what you are shooting and they will tell you which loads you can use. You can actually use any modern two and a half uh, of any reasonable pressure without issue. Uh, at the same time, I've got a 140 year old Wesley Richards that hasn't been reproofed. Am I going to risk modern shells in a very expensive shotgun? No, I'm not. But as long as you have the right size of shell and the gun is in good repair, it will be safe to shoot. The, the, the critical point, and I'm gonna hammer this again, you can't put a two and three quarter inch American shell into a vintage or European two and a half inch chamber, regardless of when the gun was made. So you know the drill below, like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff so we can do more of these videos. Uh, the website is sharp pointy things. It's largely custom stuff and vintage stuff. It varies from time to time, but these videos are meant to be informative. Thank you very much.